Hello and welcome to my first Evolver programming tutorial video. In this video I want to go over the basics for creating your own performances. I think the majority of people that have landed on this page have bought the app and want to know a few basics on how to actually program it themselves. So for the uninitiated, um, Evolver is essentially a wave cycling synth engine which uses four lanes of sequencing data to create complex arrangements. Now the combination of these four sequencer lanes is called a performance and each individual lane is referred to as a program. So the easiest way to create your own performances is to load individual programs into each of the four sequencer lanes A, B, C and D. Now if we take a look at this section at the top of the screen which has the lanes A, B, C and D you'll notice that only one lane can be selected at any one time. Now beneath the lane selection buttons we have a, a lane enable button and a sequencer enable button and below that the four lane volume buttons so you can mix as required. So for a lane to make any sound at all the enable button must be on and for any wave sequencing to take place the sequencer button needs to be enabled too. Now one very important thing to be aware of is when you switch lane uh, A, B, C or D you'll notice that the contents of the sequencer change accordingly. But before we jump headfirst into what all these options do, let's try programming a performance by selecting lane A for instance and loading a program into lane A and just seeing how that works, how that sets everything up and what we need to configure manually. So with step A active, press the load button, pick program and then in this case I'm going to pick EDM drum groove. And once that's loaded, we should be able to press a key and hear how it sounds. Now if you take a look at this, the note sequence itself is 32 steps in length. You should also notice the step note type is set to fixed, which means that this is a fixed note that is played whenever you press a key. And if you tap on individual items in that sequence, you get to see the underlying note. Now at note position 7, we're playing C sharp 4, which happens to be a shaker. And it's rather annoying, I don't really want it there, so to remove that we need to record a note in that position. So you just press the record button and tap a note on the keyboard. In this instance I've replaced it with a uh, hi-hat from the currently selected multi-sample. So as you can see I've selected lane B and I'm going to load another program, this time an octave synth bass. And again after the program's loaded notice everything changes to reflect the settings for that program. Now there's a little bit too much reverb for my liking on that bass, so you can scroll the interface, select the effects tab and dial back the reverb setting. Uh, you might also want to enable the global EQ here and actually put a bit of high end in. Okay, so let's return to the top of the page. Uh, select lane C and enable it, enable the sequencer. I'm going to load another program and I'm going to pick uh, swinging string chords for the third lane. So if I can find it, let's see what that sounds like. Okay, way too loud, so let's just dial that back a bit. Okay, that's much better. So let's enable lane D and go off and load a piano melody. But we could have chosen anything here, so it's worth experimenting. Okay, first impressions are that it's a little bit too high that piano melody and we need to drop it a couple of octaves. So if you head down the interface and click on the zones tab, we should be able to turn the transpose down a couple of octaves and give it another go. Okay, that doesn't sound too bad. We could now save that as a performance if we wanted. And don't forget you could always save out programs from existing performances or even program your own, which we're going to have a look at next. So the first thing I want to go over is how to create a kind of fade between multiple presets uh, to create some nice uh, flowing strings or choirs. Now by default we have a two-step sequence already in, in the sequencer. 
and we need to change that. If we click on the first step of the sequencer, we'll see that it corresponds to S1, which is empty dark strings, and the second step of the sequencer corresponds to S2, which is just dark strings, and we need to change that. So to do that, just select the event and click the multi-sample button, and we get the dialog from which we can pick um, a new multi-sample. In this case, I'm gonna pick a couple of pads, Breed and uh, Spacey R. Now a good hint here is to press the audition sample button and then we can listen to the two samples we've loaded. Now if the respective volume levels are good, we can turn off the audition sample, press and hold a key and listen to the cycle. Now right now, the speed of transition is too quick. So if we head over to the timing tab and increase the speed multiplier, uh, that should slow down the uh, speed of transition. So now let's try increasing the note length of the sequencer to 4 and add in an extra two samples. In this case I'm going to add the male choir to uh, S3 and the female choir to S4. Now the important thing to note here is we're not loading samples into the sequencer position, we're loading them into the slots S1 to S16. So it's also important to make sure that the uh, sequencer slot matches the right sample. That does mean that there's a limit of 16 samples per lane, um, but you can have up to 64 steps in a sequence that just have to reference these 16 samples. So let's see how that sounds. Now you may have noticed that I increased the octave for that female choir, but you can also increase the respective volume levels and pan for each of the slots S1 to S16 on this screen. Now if we quickly change to the notes tab, you'll notice that we're on wave cycle here. We've got two options, wave cycle or sequencer. And there's a, a knob below called WC fade, and that controls how quickly it fades from one sample to another. It has nothing to do with timing, it's just how quick the fade happens. So just remember, the higher the value, the slower the fade. Now it's possible to change the actual uh, offset of these notes uh, in terms of semitones. So if I click on uh, event 2, I'm going to change that to 5 semitones up, and event 3 to 7 semitones up, and we'll just see what that sounds like. Just remember, this is great for one note melodies, but not great if you're playing chords. I just want to point out that the step note type here is set to transpose rather than fixed, which means that as we press a note, that note is transposed in real time. Now, if we wanted to add, say, a drum beat into lane B, we would use the fixed note type, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So if we select layer B and enable the sequencer and we switch to the samples tab, we can load one of the pre-installed drum kits. In this case, I'm gonna load EDM kit. Now, as you know, if you press a note on the keyboard, it will actually play the sequence rather than audition the sound. To actually listen to the sound we've loaded, we have to press the audition button first. And just for reference, the shipped uh, drum kits have 16 notes starting at C3. Now there's far too much delay on there, so if you head down to the effects, we can dial back that delay and just set the reverb appropriately. Now before we record a drum sequence, the best thing to do is head off to the timing tab and just make sure that the speed multiplier is set to something which is appropriate for the speed of a drum beat. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna set it to two. Uh, notice here I set the sync to tempo button before I actually change the speed multiplier, which, uh, keeps the speed multiplier to whole numbers, one, two, four, eight, and so on. So we're gonna change the actual note length of this sequence to 16 beats. So to record, we tap on the first note of where we want the sequence to start. Now if we press the record button and press a key on the uh, MIDI keyboard, 
you'll see that it just assigns a single note into that note sequence. We want to record a sequence of notes, so we're going to press the step record button. And this allows us to sit there and enter the full sequence. And input will stop once we get the full sequence in. Now before we can preview this sequence, we've got to remember to go and turn off the audition sample button, uh, which I left on earlier. And as you can hear, we've got Lane A playing along too. So the best thing to do here is hit the solo button at the top of the screen between the meters. Now before I bring this basic programming tutorial to an end, I just want to go over the arpeggiator. So let's just enable uh, lane C, enable the sequencer, and we'll go over and we'll change the uh, lane length just to one single step. And if we change to the samples tab, I'm going to click on multi-sample, and I'm going to load a guitar sample in here. If you want to preview the sound, don't forget to press the audition button. <laughs> I think for the sake of this demonstration I'm going to leave it one octave up. Now if we flip back to the notes tab, notice the play mode is on chords. In this mode every note you play is being reproduced. If we change to bass it's going to play the lowest note that you've got pressed. If we change to arp it's going to produce uh, an arpeggiated sequence. And if we change to random we're going to get random notes which are determined by the notes we pressed. So let's re-engage the app and remove the solo button and see what it sounds like. Now if the play mode is set to app, we can click on the app tab and we can choose between a number of default apps at the top here. Alternatively, we have a custom option, and this allows us to set the fingering options per step of the sequence. So if, if this sequence was 16 steps long, you could click on each of the 16 steps and decide which fingers that are being held actually take part in that ARP sequence. And that's quite a sophisticated way of working and can create some really interesting patterns. But since this sequence is only one step long, I can't really demonstrate that here. So that concludes this basic tutorial. Look out for more Evolver tutorials coming shortly. But for now, thanks for watching.